Hey guys, Myron here, and welcome back to the Astronaut Academy. I know there's been a bit of a break between the lessons, but we are back with a good one today. As you've probably seen in the title, I'm going to be going over all of my smash attacks. While there are only three moves to talk about, they're all pretty important and will likely fill out a lot of his neutral and advantage state. I will be briefly touching down on desync smashes in this video, but they won't be the focus. One last side note as well. I will be talking about the different Pikmin strengths for each smash, but some of the differences in safeness and other frame beta will mostly be left out unless it's important. I will, on the other hand, have a link in the description with all the info you'll need if you decide to learn more. Now that the introductions are out of the way, let's get into the good stuff. To start off, we'll talk about up smash. The slowest of all his smashes, this attack starts on frame 12 and lasts until frame 22 with a FAF of 40. The sweet spot is right on top of Olimar, while the first sour spot is directly in front of him. These are both active on frames 12 through 13. The second sour spot is from frames 14 through 22 and is above Olimar as the Pikmin rises and spins. Up Smash serves as a way to start low to mid percent combos as well as apply safe, depending on the character, shield pressure. It's a decent out of shield option and takes stocks at mid high percent if you hit the sweet spot. The combo potential of Up Smash at lower percent is quite generous and depending on how you land the attack, you can often combo into another Up Smash and then follow up with an aerial, often up air, depending on which way they DI. Up Smash is also a fantastic option to take stocks early. Red and especially purple hit very hard and with Rage can take stocks as low as 80% versus some characters. However, his startup sour spot is much weaker and won't even kill at 140 in some cases. The hitbox seems inconsistent at times, but on average you want the opponent to be as close as possible to help increase the chance for the sweet spot to hit. Up Smash does 15.6% with the sweet spot, 12% with the first sour spot, and 13.2% with the final sour spot. All these damage values will be affected by Pikmin multipliers as well, which you can see in the chart here. Olimar's up smash is often touted as being safe on shield, and that's true versus some characters. Olimar's up smash will usually hit with the sweet spot, and at its safest, that will mean it is minus 8 when done with the purple or yellow. This means the opponent can act 8 frames before you, so any character with a frame 5 or faster aerial, 8 or faster up smash or up special can punish you before you can shield, and any frame 6 grab can grab you before you can spot dodge. To add to that, Olimar's smash attacks stale more severely than a lot of other attacks. After one usage of up smash, the purple up smash loses two frames of safeness, making it minus 10. This makes it imperative for the Olimar players to keep track of their staling if they are fighting a character where a fresh up smash is safe or are able to at least create a 50-50 on their shield. Lastly, it can be a decent out of shield option. However, be wary of the attacks you do it to. If the attack lingers, it runs the risk of killing Pikmin on startup, making your attack win. Overall though, this move can be a great to use at any percent due to its strong combo slash kill potential and somewhat low risk versus the right opponent. However, don't find a heavy reliance on it or you'll end up getting punished more often than not. Next up, we'll discuss forward smash. Becoming active on frame 11 and lasting until frame 29 with a FAF of 43, this move is rather straightforward with its hitboxes and animations. For all Pikmin except purple, the hitboxes go in this order. Sweet on frames 11 through 12, Sour Spot 1 on frames 13 through 19, and finally, Sour Spot 2 on frames 20 through 29. Purple has less active frames in range on this move, with its active frames being 11 through 12, 13 through 18, and 19 through 24. F Smash overall serves a couple uses. First off, is its strong kill power and damage on the sweet spot. This makes it a go-to option for punishing spot dodges and rolls, missed techs and jab locks, as well as if you know where your opponent will land. It can even combo at low percentages with the right color. F Smash damage values are as follows. Sweet Spot does 17.4%, Sour Spot 1 does 12%, and Sour Spot 2 does 7.2%. F Smash can be used in neutral as a spacing slash pressure tool, but be aware of your spacing. The move at its safest with a yellow or purple is minus 10 on shield, so if you're up close, you'll likely get punished. However, at max distance, many characters won't be able to catch you due to out-of-shield options, generally not hitting that far away. This makes F Smash ideal to use at mid-range since it will be difficult to punish and lingers a bit, meaning you can catch an opponent. Another strong use of this is at the ledge. Depending on your spacing, the Pikmin will either stay on stage and stop at the ledge, finishing its animation there, or go off stage and finish as it travels in the air. Both have their benefits. In the on stage example, since the Pikmin will linger at ledge level, it's great for catching opponents' regular get ups or attempts to approach the ledge. This gives you a little wiggle room in the timing as well, since the Pikmin will stop moving forward, but continue the entire animation in that spot. The off stage variant is equally as valuable, if not more. Many characters like to approach the ledge at a horizontal spacing. This means you can shoot an F-Smash off the ledge and score early KOs or even GIMP just by clipping them. It can also catch opponents off guard after doing a jab 1-2 near the ledge. Most players instinctively DI those in, so you can run to the ledge and fire off an F-Smash and hit them before they realize what happened. One last thing to note with forward smash. 
Unlike up and down smash, this attack's shield damage was nerfed in the previous projectile patch, meaning a purple F smash does about as much shield damage as a jab 1 2. So, trying to break shield with it isn't very feasible, furthering how unsafe it can be up close. Finally, we move on to down smash, the quickest of all the smashes coming out on frame 10 and lasting until frame 18 with AFAF of 39. Purples once again have a shorter distance in animation. The sweet spot is active on frames 10 through 13, while the sour spot is frames 14 through 18. However, for purple, the sour spot is shortened to frames 14 through 15. Not a huge difference, but one worth noting. The damage values are 13.2% for the sweet spot and 10.8% for the sour spot. Down smash on average is your least safest smash attack, being minus 11 with the sweet spot, with a purple or yellow, but can be a tad safer with proper spacing on the sour spot. Now, down smash is interesting in that it has the lowest amount of lag of all the smashes and sends it a pretty solid angle for tech chases slash combos. Since the Pikmin slide across the ground, it does a good job of keeping the opponent low, meaning they can miss techs which allow for jab locks and big punishes. And, at even lower percent, you can even true combo off of down smash with things like dash attack and grab. Yellows are king at low mid percent due to their extra hit lag on the opponent, allowing you to get to them faster to combo slash tech chase. Down smash is also nice because it can hit under the stage, easier with a yellow due to the hitbox, allowing you to two frame recoveries or punish some ledge hangs. It also hits on both sides of Olimar, meaning you don't need to be as precise. This makes it a nice option out of a landing nair if you know the opponent can't slash won't react in time. Those are the more straightforward options though. Down smash's true potential is shown when you double hit with it. What I mean by that is Olimar can hit with both Pikmin of a down smash at the same time for double the damage. This means you can do huge amounts of damage in small intervals with a proper lineup. It also means you can break full or almost full shields instantly with one move. I encourage you all to work on learning how to space for this. Purples are your best friends, but yellows are also strong when you want to catch someone not shielding. Landing on top of them or running through their spot dodge slash rolls is really the easiest way. I'll likely do a mini episode on this in the future to not take up too much time here. I personally find down smash to be a solid get off me option when the opponent is up close, but similar to the other two attacks, you can't wildly spam it doing it due to it being unsafe on shield and its projectile priority. Before I wrap up the lesson, I'll briefly go over desync smashes and how they function. When Olimar activates a smash, before the hitbox comes out, the Pikmin desyncs from the line, meaning its hurtbox activates. In addition to this, the Pikmin will naturally try to move in front of Olimar to match the normal animation. However, desyncs allow you to manipulate the position of Pikmin to attack in places they normally can't, such as on top of a platform when Olimar is below it, or in the air after Olimar has landed and the opponent had an attack out. The last example I mentioned is an on-hit desync and can be helpful to allow your smashes to beat out moves they normally clank with. Essentially, your Pikmin soaks the opposing hitbox as it starts its smash, so when your attack activates, there's nothing left to clank with. However, be mindful that if the attack is too strong, the Pikmin can die. These are just basic examples slash explanations of desyncs, but I wanted to keep it simple for this video. That's going to be it for this video. I know there was a lot of information here, and I tried to keep it relatively simple for everyone to understand. Olimar's smashes are pretty straightforward in a lot of ways, and the real depth comes in how you string them together with your other moves to create large combos and punishes. I'll probably work on the two mini lessons for desyncs and double hit down smash next, but after that I'll be doing aerials. Thank you all for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. If you want more content, you can check out some of the other guides slash content I have shown on screen. Anyways, I'll see you all next time.